UNSC ships have an impressive array of missiles and weapons to bring to bear against an enemy. The more brute force and intriguing of these weapons are the Mach cannons. These weapons range in their destructive capabilities and against Covenant ships do varying levels of damage, but it's never been explicitly discussed or gone into on what the exact yields of these weapons really are. Once we ascertain this information, we can then start looking at how that translates to the shield strength of Covenant ships, as well as looking at the nano laminar armour plating of the ships to see how well that stands up given its material properties. Hey everyone, welcome back to Incision 00 and today we're taking a closer look at the Mach cannons in the Halo universe to find out their yield and use this information to infer some further details about the Halo universe's weapons and in particular the shipborne weapons, and if you would like me to take a closer look at the other shipborne weapons and covenant shield strength and these sorts of things, then please put a comment down below or jump into the Discord and uh, put it into the video suggestions and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. Anyway, let's do this. I'll say right at the outset that this is going to be relatively speculative. Obviously there are no exact numbers and no quoted law given the exact information regarding the yields of missiles. We do have incidents and circumstances where these weapons have been used that may give us a bearing or a rough ballpark figure on the yields of these weapons, but I reiterate there is no law on this information in particular. However, we also have real-world analogues that are relatively similar to some of the weapons that have been used, if but on a smaller scale. If we can assign some conservative numbers to these missiles, then that can lead on to further videos where we look at the shield strength of Covenant vessels and the material properties of the nano laminar armour that the Covenant ships possess. But we can't do any of that until we figure out the yields, so let's start somewhere relatively familiar for everyone. Let's start with the Mach cannons. The Super Mach fires a 3000 ton projectile at 4% the speed of light. This is a great place to start because not only do we have a velocity but we also have a mass, and from these two numbers we can work out the kinetic energy involved. However we also have to bear in mind that the velocities we're dealing with are relativistic speeds, and as such we will need to do relativistic kinetic energy calculations. The reason being is because the closer an object approaches the speed of light, the more mass it gains. It's an interesting relationship between relativity and mass, and is governed broadly by the famous E equals mc squared equation, and more specifically by the Lorentz equations. So given these equations, if we then put in the 3000 ton projectile that the supermax fire, we get 219,425,927,318,694 megajoules. That is an insanely large amount of energy. If we then convert that from megajoules through to gigatons of TNT, we get 52.44 gigatons worth of TNT. It's now relatively easy to understand how a supermac can gut a Covenant ship, shielded or not, from stem to stern. Now it is claimed in the Halo Encyclopedia, however, that the velocity of the supermac is actually closer to 50% the speed of light, thus resulting in a significantly larger yield. However, the source in the reissue of the Fall of Reach still says 4%, and since this is a more recent and more consistent source, we will accept 4% as being the true figure until proven otherwise. While we're on the Fall of Reach, it is also quoted in this book that the Supermac can actually destroy two Covenant capital ships outright and severely damage a third. This is interesting because we can use this to extrapolate some further details regarding Covenant ships. So if we take the 52 gigaton yield and divide this by 2.5, assuming the two ships destroyed and one damaged, we arrive at around about 21 gigatons, give or take. If we then apply this number to one of the smaller Covenant capital ships being the CCS-class battlecruiser, then that suggests that in order to kill a single CCS-class battlecruiser you need approximately 21 gigatons of TNT. This is interesting information to have because not only does it clarify what it takes to kill a CCS-class battlecruiser, it can also be used as a backward calculation to find out the yields of other Mach cannon systems. The frigates, for example, have a projectile that weighs 600 tons. We have no specific information regarding the Mach cannons of cruiser sized vessels, other than it takes three shots to kill a CCS class battlecruiser. 
from this, that means that we have to infer the weight of the projectile. Now, considering that the frigate is a 600 ton projectile and the Supermac is a 3000 ton projectile, if we estimated it somewhere in the middle, around about 1400 tons, that makes the cruiser's rounds about twice as massive as the frigate rounds, and the Supermac cannon rounds about twice as massive as the cruiser rounds. Now that we have an estimated weight for the cruiser Mac cannon rounds, and we know it takes three cruiser rounds to take down a CCS class battlecruiser, and we know that it takes 21 gigatons in order to kill a CCS class battlecruiser, we can simply divide that 21 gigatons by the three shots. It gives us a yield of the cruiser borne Mac cannons of 7 gigatons. We can then put this back through the kinetic energy calculator with the estimated mass and the yield energy, and it gives us a velocity of 2.14% the speed of light. Now this is interesting because we know that both the frigates and the cruisers fire their Mac cannons at roughly the same velocity, so we now know a velocity for the frigate max, and we know that they are 600 tonnes in mass. From this we can then calculate the yield of the frigate Mac cannons, which is 2.96 gigatons, but let's round up to around 3 just to be friendly. There are some exceptions to this rule, including the Infinity that carry their own Supermax that are newer and more advanced and thus have probably a significantly larger yield, and for refitted Halcyon vessels like the Pillar of Autumn, and likely even the newer Autumn class cruisers built directly after the Pillar of Autumn, because they have a specialist three-shot Mach capability, allowing them to fire three shots in one single Mach charge. This is achieved by energy capture technology and more advanced reactors, but it's also noted that the Autumn's Mach projectiles are also slightly lighter. This doesn't affect the overall energy or yield of the round as a slightly lighter round will travel faster and thus the energy will be conserved. But what does happen as a consequence is that because it's a lighter round it is more likely to mushroom inside of the vessel that it's being shot at, as opposed to punching straight through it. This allows more of the kinetic energy to be dumped into the enemy vessel. And again, there are other exceptions, including the Super Heavy Mac rounds used inside of the UNSC Infinity, but again, we don't know enough about that at the moment, at least, to infer any further information on it that could be useful. And again, there are other numbers floating around out there, including the velocity of the Frigate class Mac cannons being around 30 kilometers per second. But with a 600 ton projectile, the amount of shots that would be required to take down any Covenant ship would be laughable. We're talking hundreds thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of shots. So although this may be quoted, I think it was originally quoted in uh, the original edition of Halo the Fall of Reach, although since then I think it's been retconned, and I think it was also quoted in Halo First Strike, but again, like I said, the, the numbers involved here are laughable, and I think at least in these circumstances they are massive oversights or misunderstandings of the calculations involved. You also have to bear in mind that the first example of coil guns do now actually exist, and they are massively powerful. As these scale up and technology gets better and they get up to the level of Supermac cannons, the amount of energy involved is going to be utterly epic and utterly ungodly. With the exception of the Nova Bomb, the Mac cannons are probably the most destructive weapon that the UNSC has, and one of the most effective against the Covenant. In truth, even against the Forerunners, as we did see with the UNSC Infinity against the Mandel's approach. And now I think finally we have some semi-accurate information, some semi-accurate numbers in regards to the exact yields of these weapons. But of course, this is only one particular facet of ship-based weapons. If you'd like me to cover other weapons, then please pop in the comments down below or pop over to the Discord and let me know in video suggestions over there and I'll try to tackle it as soon as I can. That leaves me to say, thanks for watching. Sticky comments down below, I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons, Neek the Silent Cartographer, Brian Sebastian, Red Sea, Darian, Stalker of the Realms, Falcon X003, the Holders of the Mantle, Alvin, Andre, Austin, Black Biscuit, Dreaming, J Rabbit, Kaiser, Reclaimer216, Samantha, Spartan A498, Squire Young, Silux, The Death Mantle, The Revanche, Thin Ice, my Reclaimers, Bastian, Christopher, Critical, Daniel, David, Deep Cover, Dylan, Flaming Halo, Guppy, Harbinger, Ice Lord Cryo, Josh, Verbal Statue, Kenneth, Mickey, Molshar, Nightrise, Spesigo, Starlight, Zack and Zack, my Metarchs, 
and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys, seriously, you guys are awesome. And this, all of this wouldn't be possible without you. Just having you guys aboard is, is phenomenal. I've seen a massive spike in, in people jumping aboard. Um, it's very, very humbling. Uh, if you like Halo Lord Disgust to Insane Lazar Detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels, including Discord. And if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon, joining the domain and the list of beautiful human beings who exist there that I've just listed, as well as tons more and supporting the channel over there, or indeed becoming a channel member by hitting that join button. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo-related goodness. Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain.